If there's one thing that we've learned from the coronavirus pandemic is that we can't really rely on the government to be there for us. We've got complaints nonstop that Trump did everything wrong. Fine, if that's what you believe, then don't rely on government. But at the same time, we've got a homeless crisis in California. We've got police arresting and detaining people who did nothing wrong. Meanwhile, they're ignoring actual people violating social distancing because those are people in government. The first story I have for you that I really want to focus on is a black doctor handcuffed by police while unloading supplies for homeless people from his van outside his Miami home during the coronavirus pandemic. The reason I'm focusing on this in the context of government failure is that we need doctors. We need them to check on the homeless. We need them to help us stop the crisis. If cops are going to hassle them over arbitrary rules, the government is acting very inefficiently, isn't it? But also take a look at what's going on over in California. 70 people in San Francisco homeless shelter have uh, contracted coronavirus, the largest outbreak in California. And we've known this was going to happen and warned against it. And they didn't do anything. Maybe they can't do anything. You might argue it's not the job of the government to do anything about this. Okay, (laughs) if that's the argument, we need to find other solutions. You may argue it is their job, in which case they failed that job. But I, I, I think the best the best example of government failure so far, and I know it's not really the best. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who told City that getting your roots done is not essential amid lockdown, defends her decision to have one, saying she needs it because she's in the public eye. Yeah, she got her hair done while people are being told not to go outside. Look, these are just a few stories. I really want to highlight this doctor got coughed because it really makes me angry. But what do we see? The government enacts arbitrary rules as for your own good ignores their own rules. These cops that are going out arresting people are violating social distancing for the for, for what? I saw a tweet. I think it was from Blair White saying that she was walking her dog or something. And a cop came up to her and yelled at her to put a mask on. Like, what, do you, what, what is happening? And, and you, you, what I see from this, look at this story of this doctor. I want to read this to you. Expect this. OK, they're going to come out and say for everyone's good. You must stay in your homes. And they don't abide by the same rules. They do whatever they want. They claim you don't have in in Chicago, of all places, they say you should not be allowed to carry up and to defend yourself. Yet all the politicians do or they have armed guards. Now, I know conservatives all get this. And a lot of you are probably laughing, saying like, welcome to the party, Tim. But no, I get it. That's why I'm highlighting it. I read these stories all day, every day. Check out this story. Black doctor is handcuffed by police while unloading supplies for homeless people from his van outside his Miami home during the coronavirus pandemic. A Florida police sergeant handcuffed an African-American doctor while he was unloading tents for the homeless from his van outside his own home. The incident occurred on Friday and was caught on video by a security camera outside Dr. Armin Henderson's home in Miami, Florida. Dr. Armin Henderson trying to help the homeless and he gets cuffed because for what reason? I don't think this is an issue of, you know, Black Lives Matter, police brutality or anything like that. It's the cops. They've been doing this. They've been pulling up being like, there's a person I can hassle for no reason. In the video, Henderson, who works for the University of Miami Health System, can be seen moving to and from his white cargo van, which is parked at the curb with all of its doors open. After a few minutes, a police cruiser pulls up to the van. Why? They say security footage outside Dr. Armin Henderson's home showed the moment that he was approached by police while he was unloading supplies. Henderson has a brief conversation with a sergeant in the vehicle before turning away, at which point the sergeant exits the car. They have another have another discussion, after which Henderson, unhooking the mask from his ears, starts walking back to his home. The sergeant and Henderson then have another conversation, which leads to the sergeant putting zip tie handcuffs on Henderson, who can be seen calling out to someone. The sergeant then leads Henderson back to his cruiser and tells him something, gesticulating in Henderson's face as he placidly leans against the car. After a few moments, Henderson's wife emerges from the home and speaks to the sergeant. She then returns inside, at which point the sergeant removes Henderson's handcuffs. And when she reappears, she shows the sergeant some ID. As Henderson's wife and the sergeant speak, Henderson can be seen picking up some gardening equipment and moving it towards his home. Why would this ever happen? I'm I'm sorry, man. This is supposed to be a violation of the Fourth Amendment, right? Okay, well, all right, I'll chill out a little bit. I'm a little worked up. Because I've seen way too many stories of overzealous cops arresting people, detaining people for stupid reasons. And now we have literally a doctor trying to get supplies for the homeless. Once again, police doing stupid things. So no, I don't think it's like the end of the world. Yes, I understand police have a right to detain people for reasonable suspicions. But come on, man. A dude in front of his own house loading up a van of supplies that we need him to be doing. 
You can, t- we can you, you now take a look at what goes on in San Francisco when they don't have any support. And this not th- this story about the homeless in San Francisco, I don't want to pretend like is an overt condemnate, like an example of government failures. I just want to point out why the first story is. The doctor needs to do his job, man. Don't hassle people. You can pull up and say, how's it going, man? What are you up to? And when the guy says, just getting supplies with homeless. Appreciate your pr- appreciate the, the volunteering, man. You, you have a good day. Is it that hard? Do we have to be completely suspicious of everyone all the time? This is happening not just in the U.S., but it's happening in the U.K. and many other countries. 70 people in San Francisco homeless shelter have contracted the virus, and that's in a shelter. So I'm not going to say it's directly the fault of the government. I mean, but you've got, you've got a serious homeless problem in California that they can't seem to solve. They have a supermajority in the state, a Democratic supermajority. You'd think that'd be enough to enact whatever plan they wanted, but they can't do it. I'm going to come now to another frustrating story. This is kind of a fruit punch. This is a, this is a government failure punch bowl of different stories. Just because I've, I've, you've, you may have noticed I've done a bunch of segments about government overreach in the past uh, couple of days or so because I'm genuinely concerned the rise of authoritarianism is upon us. There is no better example, in my opinion, right now of exactly what you can expect than this story about the Chicago mayor. The Daily Mail says Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot has defended having her hair cut in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, despite forcing her city's salons and barbers to close in compliance with the statewide stay at home order. Lightfoot 57 sparked outrage last weekend after her hairstylist shared photos to social media after tending to the mayor's tresses. The pair posed close together and neither was wearing a mask or gloves. Critics called out the Democratic mayor as a hypocrite in light of the fact that she had recently released a public service announcement telling Chicago residents that getting their roots done is not essential. Lightfoot has also pushed for police to arrest residents who flout lockdown orders. Bingo. You know, I hope all of the socialists can look at this story and the other story about the doctor and recognize why it does not work. It will never work. Stop trying to make it a thing. It just doesn't work. I don't get how you have all these socialists who rag on police all day, every day. They say a cab. You know what that means? All cops are, and then a B word YouTube doesn't want me to say. All cops are, I'll just say, all cops are bastards. That's what what it's supposed to mean. They say literally every cop all the time. I wouldn't even go that far. And I got problems with this. But then they simultaneously think giving the government full control over the means of production and our society would result in a utopia? I'm sorry, man. That's like your brain is, is, is your wires are crossed. You can't believe both things are true at the same time, right? How are you going to argue for small government, you know, a weakened police force, right? They're pol- it's pol- you know what? Maybe, maybe they think in their utopia, they'll have police accountability. They won't. I mean, you never will. You will end up with a political party that does this. They will tell you, you are not allowed to go outside. You're not allowed to defend yourself. You're not allowed to keep the the fruit of your labor. But they will. You ever see that movie Equilibrium? I'm reminded of that movie. It's a Christian Bale movie. Definitely check it out. It's really good. And it's basically this futuristic world where everybody has to take an emotion suppressor like drug. I know kind of, it, trust me, it's not really off topic, but you know, for the sake of conversation, Christian Bale eventually stops taking the drug and starts getting in tune with his emotions, something he's never experienced before. And it turns out that, you know, uh, well, he ends up siding with the rebels. The government burns art and anything that could inspire emotion. It turns out the leader himself has emotions and doesn't take this drug. Rules for thee, but not for me. This is always the problem with massive government. Now, I certainly am not one of these staunch, small government libertarian types. I think a slight, a small to medium sized government is actually a really good thing. Libertarians tend to want a very small government. Anarcho capitalists and anarchists want no government. But the 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 anarcho left seems to make very little sense in that regard because they do want some kind of like, I don't know, cultural mandate over how you're supposed to behave, but you can't enforce it. So don't ask me. That's why they end up becoming authoritarian leftists. But ultimately, you end up with story after story, policy after policy, and problem after problem. You have all of these instances where the government will do whatever they want while telling you you can't. I mean, take a look at North Korea. You got a big fat Kim Jong-un eating all the food while the people of his country starve. You, you, you see this all the time. The way I often tell it to people is, as much as I would prefer a more cooperative system, leaning slightly, slightly to the left and more libertarian for sure, I would be fine with the more right-leaning libertarian system because within that system, I can do whatever I want. 
right? Right, right libertarianism would allow you to have your own pocket of left libertarianism. So if, if our government was completely free market and free, you could form your little, you know, your little communist commune and do whatever you want. In fact, there are people in this country who do it. So if you want that, that exists for you. The reality is I think many of these people just want authoritarianism. They want the government monarch king's leaders to tell them what they can or can't do because they, they prefer it. Many of these people think that everyone else is too stupid to do, uh, to, do, uh, to do the right thing without realizing it's not an issue of being stupid. While I do think a lot of people are stupid, it's an issue of what you think is the right thing versus what someone else thinks is the right thing. And that creates a distributed system, which is more likely to get it right. There's also a problem that the system can't solve every, uh, the problem that our system can't solve for every problem and eventually will run away and cause serious problems that will eventually be, bring our downfall. If we can't adapt to escalating pollution and other crises, crises then yeah, we could end up, you know, dying out. I, I, I think humans are resilient and adaptive, and I'm more inclined to believe that by distributing the, the control and the power among the people as opposed to centralizing it like they would want, we'll do better. Think about it this way. Looking at this doctor who's doing what we need him to do, seems like a really good dude. If you remove the power of the police to do what they're doing, we would have more of these people working to solve this problem. I admit people are flaunting the lockdown and it's making things worse. I don't know what, you, what you're supposed to do, but I'll tell you what, this ain't it. I'll leave it there. Look, I'll be honest, man. You, 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 you give me more stories about violations of civil liberties and you're going to see me make more videos about this. But I got a couple more segments coming up for you in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly.